Casuarina's here. Yeah. Look out here, it's kind of creepy in here. It's in the casuarina grows. We have rainbow in the sky. I'm not sure what it is. That's strange. Look at that. Wow. I don't know why they're wrong. Fair enough. Okay. There's something you don't know, see. Every day, that is a bookshelf in a tree. Okay, this new growth in Cream Page, and I'm Matt, and we're, I'm actually currently at Shaville National Park, or as I like to call it, as a joke, Shelbyville. <laughs> But um, I'm actually here today to uh, have a look around to see uh, this um, come on plain plant species. Uh, apparently there's a lot, there's over a hundred something, hundred, I can't even remember the, the number, but there's over a hundred um, plants that actually uh, are found here on the, um, on this uh, national park, on this area. So um, here, where we are is um, sort of the start of the uh, the place where uh, there was through the 60s. It was actually um, actually earlier than that. There was actually in actually a uh, migrant camp back in the day. Um, before that, it was actually a farm um, for a long time. And then yeah, um, after the, it being a migrant camp for a good while, um, it was actually a um, training. Uh, facility for World War, War, well Vietnam War actually. So they trained uh, men that would go into Vietnam, and then this is one example of one of the uh, huts here um, that they have. Um, but yeah, they have this would have been the central headquarters, now run by the national parks. Um, yeah, this was a canteen and an SAR hut in front of us. So that was 1949 to 1946. This was a migrant accommodation center. Provided, um, obviously, food for um, the migrants here, and maybe probably was used for storage afterwards for for, um, for when they were doing the training here. We're gonna go get into it, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna have a look at around Shaville. I mean, Shelville. I mean, Shaville National Park. I'll take you around, and see if we can find some plants. There is actually a uh, target plant today. There's a lagoon here that is actually um, um, north of us, or, and I'm gonna go there and see. The, there's apparently a Utricularia species that's there. They can only be found there, so it's a very rare plant. I managed to track it down in this book that I got. I'll show it to you later. We're gonna um, have a look at that, the lagoon, and we're gonna have a look around for anything that might be rare around here, because there are a few species that found nowhere else in Sydney, being this a uh, large, last sort of um, reserve for some of the Cumberland Plain plant plants. So we'll get into that and uh, yeah, anyway, we'll have a look around. Check it out today. Um, uh, there's a lagoon today and uh, it's kind of uh, north of here that we're gonna check out. And um, it's apparently really rich in plants, but there is a Utricularia species that I wanna check out. And it's also another rare, very rare, could be extinct uh, plant that could be around here. There was a plant that was extinct here, but um, yeah, we're gonna check, try to get that Utricularia species.
so yeah anyway um we'll, i'm gonna get driving and uh we'll get into it all right bye see you soon i'm, I'm hopefully you stay with me please stay with me bye <laughs> so i've traveled here to the lagoon um as you can see it's a well preserved area um we got sort of uh Sorry about that. So we've got alluvial soils around here, so they're ancient soils that have occurred when the um, when there's uh, rising in this area. They're due to weathering, and so we've got particularly clay soils. When it rains, it gets wet. I just passed the school uh, class and just come down here to go have a look at the lagoon, so that was nice. Yeah. Um, I'm wearing my hat. It's a bit warm today. Yeah. We'll see if you can see any spe um, different species. You can see there's some really old trees, eucalyptus species. Um, there's melucas along here. And uh, fortunately, you get a lot of blackberry around here. Uh, sorry, um, you do get blackberry around here, but um, you also get you also get a lot of privet, a lot of privet. <laughs> if you see my war on weeds video, which I'm probably gonna do another video on. Um, that was a good video on, on weeds. My camera just falling down. And uh, here we go, here's the, here's the lagoon here. Wow. I didn't think it was this big. On the map, it doesn't look that big. As you can see, is all those Nepean pebbles in it. That's uh, had had a lot of flooding over the millions of years it's probably been here. I've come out on sort of the um, south side of the um, lake, but I'm gonna go have a look around, walk around here, and uh, yeah. But here we have a vine. Um, it's really close to the. Um, the bank here but we have got some casuarinas all around but we have this vine this is Bessonia Bessonia stromania and uh it's actually a um usually a temperate rainforest sort of plant uh find it a bit more close to sort of Hornsby area and stuff like that but it seems to um not mind these sort of moist areas these flooding um areas near estrine place well estrine places like like this lake so um yeah it's a um yeah very very hardy vine looks like it. it has this really big thick trunk on it this um we've got an arborist tag up there as well but um it's not look like doesn't look like it's, uh it's particularly aggressive I'm um, not flowering at the moment, but I'll uh, put up the flower on it. Um, just a nice, nice find to see. Um, you know, about 100 species worldwide of these um, are found in different places like uh, Asia and all that sort of stuff. So you can see it up there in the canopy there. Nice. And there's one just over there in this uh, young uh, casuarina. That's good to see. Currently, um, just by the, uh, just currently by the uh, edge here. There used to be what looks to be a old boardwalk here. Used to be able to walk onto the um to lay out the lake, but I think um the recent floods destroyed it. Got something down here. It's Asteraceae, possibly. I'm not exactly sure on the, what that is. Very, um, serrated leaf, but symmetrical. I guess kind of gives you a clue on what it is. Um, there's a few of it here, but there's also, um, all this reed species as well. And here's a, um, species of what looks to be like a uh, sedge 
not exactly sure on the species, but we can put it up there. She's got all this. Um, I am looking for this utricularia, which has been spotted in the area. There you got a crane over there. There's a crane sitting on there. It's quite a calm, calm day. A lot of mud, I'm not gonna go too far in there. But um this interesting. Yeah, so we've got all these reeds here. I just went on this little boardwalk they've got, so that stops from any compaction happening. But you can see um there's a really important area. Um, because it actually provides a lot, these reeds, for birds, reptiles, insects, amphibians, all that sort of stuff. Um, not a lot of water at the moment, but usually there might, usually there will be water once we get a bit of rain. We did get some rain the other day, but it wasn't enough to sort of get everything going. Everything's quite dry at the moment. I'm kind of, kind of, Currently we're running out of time. I haven't seen any anything stand out yet here. So anyway, we'll press on. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but uh apparently there's um some chickens right next next door here. Some uh, male cocks. <laughs> uh, yep, it's not the morning. They're a bit late. It's not morning. I don't know why they're uh I don't know why they're um Fair enough. Okay. Um yeah, as I said, I don't really have that much time here. I might have to come back another day, but um it's just good to assess what's what's here and what it's like. Um they do close a bit early. So I've only got half an hour to get back there. I don't want to get too carried away. So I might just have to head back. So yeah. <laughs> so here's the book that got me on the trail to come here in this lagoon. And uh, it's uh, Rare Bushland of Western Sydney. And it's a pretty good book. It uh, goes into like all the um, uh, different types of um, areas where you're going to find these plants. And, and it talks about individual places like Blacktown, Camden, um, all those places, all these places around um, Sydney. So um, there's a lot of Cochula around that, that um, invasive species. But there is one plant that's Glossine, Glosso Giant. Glossogyne, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but uh, Tunifolia, and that's it there. But it's, that's it, it's, that's what we're looking for. It's probably not going to be flowering at this time, but I was just hoping um, it was, it was going to be here, um, even if it's just a plant. Um, so that's one of the things that we're looking for. Um, and then that, um, that carnivorous plant, that um, uh, bladderwort, um, supposedly that's here as well. So I we'll have to go check that out as well. So, um, anyway, um, we'll keep moving on. I was just having a look at my book, just seeing if I didn't miss anything. I'm um, pretty sure that was a um, member of the Asteraceae family before, but um, not exactly for sure, but I'll put it in. There's something you don't see every day that is a bookshelf in a tree <laughs> oh the floods it must have been crazy down here because that's that's what, nearly 10 meters high up there. I mean, it's a big tree, tall um, Melaleuca, um, Quincefolia. Uh, but I just, I looked up, I'm like, 
oh, is that a bird box? And I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> it's a bookshelf. There are interesting things you find after the floods. Um, I did actually think that I found a body. Um, <laughs> turns out I was a, a, a cow that had passed away. It looked like a human spine, but um, <laughs> I was, I thought I was gonna be on the, the news for discovering something, but uh, no. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, things you find. This is a massive um, Melucus typhoides, um, also known as the uh, spiky Meluca, rough Meluca. You can see it's been here for a long time. It's probably almost 100 years old. I've never seen one this big. Um, never. And you can see it's got very papery bark. It uh, drops papery bark. Provides a lot of animals shelter, insects and um, reptiles and stuff like that. Massive, really massive. You can um, tell by the uh, foliage. Foliage is quite uh, spiky. Has a really pointy. It's like a um, lance, lance shape. But um, yeah, has a um, fruit. You can see this fruit. It's quite tiny. Um, I don't see that, but you can see the fruit there. Little um, hard capsule. So yeah, Matasi. Um, Matasi usually has those hard capsules, but um, a really nice tree. And you can see how broad and big it gets once it's left to grow by itself, untouched. And I've just been experiencing a lot of these uh, casuarina groves um, but it looks like there's been some vandalism here but if you can actually camp here apparently and um, people burning stuff there's a lot of debris from the last floods as you can see this would have torn through here like anything so I'm um, not seeing a lot of flora at the moment which is Unfortunate, or unfortunate, but we have these key species here, so that's a good thing. Having these key species still intact, and uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll be lucky to see something, uh, something a bit rarer. This is um, example of small leaf privet. Now it's very. Evasive species come from Asia. It was brought to to be a hedge. I think some people still use it as a hedge still. But um, as you can see, it's um completely blanked out. It's growing on these. The casuarinas are fine. They can grow up, but every understory plant has been smothered and makes these dark, impenetrable barriers and light barriers for any smaller species down the bottom there and um you can see there's some native um natives that have just failed they're kind of choking out the um the rest of it what's this some sort of box some sort of, some sort of box there but yeah it's very thick here now I think there's another big giant Maluka just there. You can see the big trunk. But um, for shame, as you can see all the little, little seedlings on the ground here of uh, of the uh, privet, and they have these berries that are quite um, delectable for birds. I don't know if they taste anything any good for them, but um. They, that's how they spread the birds, um, take them, eat them, poop them out, and then they fall and then they germinate again. As you can see, they uh, they germinate pretty quickly. So they do have some uh, do have some uh, thing, things to do here at the national park. To keep on top of this this privet. sees how thick it is there. Very thick. 
<clears throat> here's his Parsonia species. You can see, apparently, well, as you can see, the juvenile leaves are quite different. They're quite long, oblong, sort of longer. Still have that tip, but um, that's where it starts out as a juvenile leaf, and then it gets the bigger leaf up there. It gets more around a leaf up there, Personia. And you can see it's up in the in the casuarinas here. I want to get out of here. It's kind of creepy in here it's in the casuarina groves. Um, hopefully, it sort of opens up a bit more but um yeah it's an interesting vine um there we go there's the adult leaf it's just a much bigger version of itself kind of kind of leathery in a way symmetrical and uh opposite leaves like in the Blair Witch Project there's a guy there with a, with a walking cane scared the hell out of me <laughs> it's like uh, what did you did I scare you? He's like, like yeah you were really quiet and you came out of nowhere So is any, anybody missing their pots? Because I found them. <laughs> Shadow, anyone who's missing pots, um, they're right here. You can come and collect them. You left them right here in the Casuarina Grove where you know you left them, all right? <laughs> so come on now. Come come and grab them. Uh, just all this stuff from the, uh, the flood. I'm just going to carry a bit closer to... I'm just gonna put it next to this bit of plastic and pick up this bit of plastic. Put this near the tire. I'll pick up this plastic bag. Leave no trace, kind of. <laughs> Kind of. On the fringe of this, uh, looks like someone's paddock. Um, on the fringe of this uh, lake, we have uh, Acacia floribunda, um, a really nice, nice, fairly tall two meters, maybe it's a bit more, um, two meters high. But um, it's flowering at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's floribunda, um, as you can see. Just the um, nice little, really oblong sort of shaped ray seams there of the flowers. And the um, leaf is quite lance, lanceolate. Sorry, lanceolate. It's really long. Not many ver venation, very faint venation. So that's why I think it's floribunda. It's a beautiful shrub. It's um, flowering its head off at the moment. There's a few speed, a few other ones over there. Um, here we go. There you go. Really nice one. Very common in the Cumberland Plain. Um, so it's not uh, not anything rare, but it's uh, nice to see. Um, come across this uh, teepee. It's got um, you know all the accommodations of what someone could have. Um, you know. If you're looking for a house, this is perfect. <laughs> it's got its own little ceiling tray that's outside as well. That's cool. Looks pretty cool. They've used the um, casuarina leaves. It's full of legit house bra. Pretty cool. <laughs> so we're coming to the north side of the um, the uh, lake here, or the lagoon, I should say. Um, but I uh, haven't been seeing much. Um, we just saw that acacia. Um, those acacias, well, most acacias are actually 
um, they're pioneer plants. So they'll come in and they'll uh, take over a certain area. Um, not take over, but I'll, I'll definitely, um, there's the uh, other entranceway. But they definitely will come in and they actually provide nitrogen. So they'll come in and uh, stabilize the soil because their roots will come and stabilize the soil and also improve the soil as well. So then these other species can come in and um, yeah, and come in and colonize as well. Massive rock there. Um, don't, I think it's natural. It's natural uh, rock. But I don't know how I'm gonna get across the other side there. I don't think there's another path there. I think I've fully, I went as far as I could. So I'll go back. Yeah, definitely a lot of privet here. We got the uh, purple tops, the invasive purple tops. It's going the seed. Um, obviously brought here, European plant. It's brought here to um, for pastures and stuff like that. It's not great. I don't think it's great for animals actually, but I'll come up here and see if we can find another way up to the uh, other side. Here I'm having back because the sun's going down a bit and uh, just walking through these reeds. But it's a really good idea that they put this uh, boardwalk in. It stops people from walking on the uh, swamp, swampy areas and compacting soil and stepping on plants and animals and stuff like that. So it's a good idea they put this in. But um, I'm losing a bit of light, so I might have to do a part two here, actually. I want to come back and do the other side of the uh, lake, but we'll see. I'll uh, hurry back, back and see if I can still get out of here before it gets dark. So I've got a flashlight, but I don't plan on being here at night. <laughs> and there's things rustling around. <laughs> Weird rainbow in the sky. I'm not sure what that is. That's strange. Some sort of something going on there. That's incredible. Hello, duckies. <laughs> Some European duck there. <laughs> Just hanging out. Anyway, I didn't find that plant. Um, um, good to have a look around here. Yeah, I'm in the car now. <laughs> And I'm a little bit tired and a little bit hungry too, so I'm going out to the movies tonight, so <laughs> I go see a movie. And um, so yeah, anyway, I hope you liked this little video of the lake, um, lagoon, I should say. And um, yeah, definitely uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, but if you like hiking, if you like, if you like, um, sorry, I turned my car on. <laughs> Multi, a multitasker, if you like, these videos make sure you hit that like button and then you can get more of these videos it encourages me to make more and i'm i'm happy to bring them to you bring bring you like um a better relationship with plants and the environment around us and all that sort of stuff so i like coming out here and um anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna head off now and uh i hope you have a Awesome, awesome uh, time watching this video. I'm out, so goodbye. <laughs>